What's up? What's up? What's up? How's it going, Hello. everybody? Hello, we're back. We're Hello, back. Hello, everyone. <laughs> we have a, another special guest this week with his extra HD camera, super high quality, especially with that dramatic intro. That was our first time using like a dramatic intro like that. Nice the effect. countdown. Yeah, that we gotta we gotta use that more. We gotta spatialify it probably. I don't know, like mm. do it like in a spatial space, giant countdown timer. We've already learned how to make a, a timer, right? In spatial, we know how to make that big and put that in a space and do like a crazy, crazy environment. I think that would be oh, that idea. if anyone wants to build that out there, we can incorporate it into our live streams. It'll be it'll be super cool to incorporate um, some community stuff into the live stream. I think that would be dope. But uh, yeah, how's it going, guys? Happy Happy Tuesday, almost end of July. It's How you guys doing? Great. <laughs> very well, very very well. Excited to uh, hear from Reno today. How you doing, Reno? I'm good, thank you. Doing well. Yeah, yeah pretty yeah. busy day today. Lots of uh, things going on. So it's yeah. been interesting. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for Thanks for joining us. It's awesome to to have you on here. I know we're today we're going to talk about um prototyping and basically putting together the concepts for your game and what it looks like to to yeah conceptualize and prototype a game and go through that whole process um and Renaud you've been building all kinds of games for I don't know a long time games you know 3D you know experiences arts like you you've had the uh the bozos and now it's uh, infinity um as your project you've been working on and you're also that's what you do you know, in your, your personal projects, but you've also been a part of the spatial team for, I mean, what, like a year and a half, two, maybe two years almost now. I mean, it's been, you've been on the spatial team like a, a, a good amount of time. Um, and have been, I mean, I, I don't want to do the whole intro for you, but like, I guess tell everybody like <laughs> who you are for those who don't know you, who don't know Bozo or Infinity World. Sure. Else. Sure. Sure. So I'm, I'm Renault. I'm, uh, I'm French, obviously. Uh, I live, uh, <laughs> I live in Brooklyn, uh, where I uh, work uh, with Spatial at the moment, and uh, it's, it's been a great experience uh, actually launching uh, my first NFT was uh, with Spatial, the Bozo Island, which was really fun to to work on and uh, being uh, invited to to take take part of uh, like building a metaverse, I guess. And yeah, I uh, basically so I'm an artist, I'm a designer, and a creative director. I work um, basically in in those fields, uh, mostly I come from advertising and I used to to create digital experiences um, like kind of when Flash was a thing 10 years ago, it's kind of like the ancestor of spatial, I guess. And uh, I kind of slowly joined to motion design and uh, 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 video production and uh, 3D uh, typography and graphic design as well and branding. So I've been helping uh, like spatial a little bit like 360 kind of like um, whatever help is needed, then uh, my creative input uh, can be can be used. And uh, yeah, no, I'm building um, basically metaverse and gaming uh, spaces, assets, uh, kind of brand them and make sure they are uh, conceptual and um, execution are uh, you know top notch and high quality. So basically focusing on that, on research and uh, execution. Um, so it's. As yes, yeah, big process. There's a lot to to talk about for sure. It's very interesting. Something that very close to my heart that I love to to do and and uh, take on. Yeah, yeah. You've been doing. I mean, what else? I mean, I think like our community and like the creators in our community, the builders in our community, are probably like more familiar with more things of yours that you've created than they even realize. Like, what are the thing, Some of the things that you've worked on you know, part of the spatial platform or like whether it's content on the spatial platform that's out there that they may know. I mean, one that comes to my mind is the Spatian astronaut avatar that Absol you designed and created. Absolutely. The Spatian astronaut, uh, the, also the Atrium, and uh, also on, on helping out the games as well and uh, creating new, new uh, look for the games, kind of like refining that and, and fleshing it out uh, as much as I can, as well as uh, also, I guess, like... Uh, the social media presence as well, working on the, making sure the branding is you know on, on point. I so like when things are consistent and uh, and whole. I think there's a part of it that comes to when you try to create a brand, um, being consistent and recognizable is so much of the um, transpires so much of the ethos that you want to to communicate. So this I think it's really important for sure. 
Yeah, you definitely helped set. I know. I think it was earlier this year. Put together like the the brand guidelines and that consistency for for spatial as a platform, and got us in a really good place to be consistent with with the spatial brand design. And I know, you know, when we're on our team, like the team that Jack and I are on, definitely work every day to like implement that. So we're using all that incredible work that that you and the design team put together to give spatial that like that really. When you look at something, you know, like that's. Spatial. That's spatial, exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah like great. when you look at you just recognize a font, right? I can recognize like any brand just by their font. I don't even have to see the name of the brand. You just know that that's, you know, whatever brand it is, which is super cool. Unless you're Twitter and you go and change your brand to something else and have it be completely <laughs> unrecognizable. <Yeah>. Then, <laughs> or X. It's not Twitter. It's X now. So. <laughs> yeah, that's an example of what not to do, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need those examples to contrast with the what not to do and what to do. But yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah we wanted we we wanted you to come on today because you know we're with the teaching the toolkit. Like we have our community learning how to build experiences. Jack, you know, you've been you know sort of the the guinea pig in the chair of like you know learning like learning the toolkit. Um, but then yes. also you're able to go on and like teach the community as well. But I think a really key part of the games and experiences that people are building is how do you actually like come up with the ideas and the designs for what you want to create? Because it's not always like just jumping in and like building right off the bat. I mean, I'm guilty of doing that sometimes. I just jump into Unity and start just like building things and see what comes out of it. But I think to have like a really good experience, you there's some planning that takes place like up front and like kind of going through like different design iterations of like what it is that you want to create, like wh whether it's the story you want to tell or like the world that you want to put someone in, there's like a whole process um, of going through that. And I think you're a great person to kind of talk through that. So maybe kind of talk through like what your process is when it came to either, you know, uh, Bozo, Bozo Island and, and all the different Bozo spaces that you've made or like any of the current stuff that you're working on. Like what's your process from like just conceptualizing and then kind of working towards, you know, productizing those spaces, I guess. Yeah, ab absolutely. I feel there's um, there's four necessary steps when you want when you want to create, a, I guess, a world, a, a, a brand as well, because your ultimately your your game or your digital spaces have become brand because they representative of the kind of like efforts and value that you want to communicate. And I feel that those four steps are basically research, exploration development and then like final details and i guess um, in, not the execution because execution is part of the development i guess but basically those four steps gonna lead you to to a final product nice nice and just like you have on your screen here i don't know if we can bring it up yeah your background <laughs> uh, can we, there, there you complexity go complexity <laughs> is the enemy of execution that's very very heavy I actually put that recently. Uh, I went on a on a little uh, like a change there. Basically, I decided to to um, rebrand uh, my project Bozo um, because the I I wanted something a little bit like that go, that wanted that could go a little bit deeper than just you know being Bozo and funny. It seems like it lacked depth, so I wanted to to do something with more depth, which is kind of like part of uh, my effort to refine my brand and. Um, mm -hmm bring something that's a little bit more mature now that I, I basically experimented. Like um, the Bozo for me, which I basically spent two years uh, working on, and I mostly research and uh, explore and develop some things, um, some tools, for example, to to uh, generate them and, and so on. That's like actually uh, something that's not on spatial because it's with a uh, GLTF format, which is used for, for the NFTs. Um, so this kind of like, there's always, like your ID and then the execution and that bridge between is that path of like trying to get somewhere is ultimately ultimately going to lead you somewhere else, I guess. <laughs> Especially in in um, when you studying and researching those things, you have a clear map on your mind. You're going to go, oh, okay, I want to do this, I want to do that, and. It's not going to be that easy at first, especially if you if you don't have a lot of experience. So the idea is to kind of like build up on those experience and and those failures as well, to kind of like lead you somewhere uh, that as close as you you want it to be in the first place. 
Yeah, I like. That. I'm curious. Uh, what was like some of the first things or reasons that ever got you into design and just art in general? Like, oh, I guess like I always loved uh, drawing. Like I remember like drawing as a kid a lot, and I I went on and studied applied art because I wanted to to become an architect or a designer. Uh, I actually considered a lot of different things until finally going going to graphic design. And um, this is where I kind of learned a lot of the, the visual principle of, uh, of design as a, as a whole, studying applied art, and then kind of like thinking about this idea of total design, where I think it's most applicable to the metaverse now or to, or to gaming, where you want to find a common thread to whatever you're doing. So you want to have a sort of like uh, consistency through the whole of your your game or your brand in terms of uh, typography, shape, material, lighting, all of those different things that kind of uh, make up the, the the production design of your world and so on. Nice. Um, so basically, just being like passionate about that and researching it and wanting to to create stuff led me to to those like each time two discoveries and testing, practicing, and failing, and some recognizing the things that are successful and capitalizing on that. Nice. nice. That's awesome. So maybe let's, let's, I, I would love to like jump in and kind of see, I mean, A, like if you want to show any of the stuff that you worked on to kind of like contextualize it, because I see you bring up your, your sure. stuff there too. Um, and then maybe we can kind of, if there's any like kind of tools that you can show us or walk through um, that would be awesome. I do. I forgot to mention at the top. I have to unfortunately hop at two thirty, which is fifteen minutes. But Jack is will keep keep things rolling um, for for the full hour here. But um, yeah, other than that, let's yeah, I'd love to let's jump in. Sounds great. Yeah, I tell you a little bit about my work. I basically started uh, doing motion design. So that was um, like, I guess not exactly because I started doing web design at first, but that's not on my website anymore because that was like 12 years ago. <laughs> so, so I kind of like, this is where I, I learned about 3D and um, kind of really got the knowledge from, you know, executing those uh, those motion design stuff and, and so on. I guess it's, I, I should have maybe brought up some of the earlier examples, but they were in Flash, which doesn't work anymore, where you know, we created a game which kind of like was a little bit like spatial. But like just like trying things and uh, taking initiative uh, allows you to kind of like get that practice and that knowledge and researching and Google is your friend. Um, then I kind of like went into more uh, typography and design work. Um, I actually came to New York to work at a company called Buck. And um, like this where like I really kind of capitalized on, on using system for, for branding, for design and to kind of like streamline those different workflows. And I think it's going to be interesting because we're going to talk about workflows and ways to kind of like uncover and scratch underneath the surface to kind of um, find the tools that allows you to, to create faster and, and make your life a little bit easier. And, and then I went into doing gaming and, and uh, spaces and NFTs and things like that. And that I love that because it kind of really, like I said, I combined this idea of uh, the total design, having uh, those different elements that all need to be taken care of and um, being shown as a, as a whole experience. Uh, so I think that's, that's really interesting to me. Um, yeah, I think yeah. like like the games and stuff that you know I've I've seen you make with like in the context of the bozos at least, and really like games in general, right? The games are just like interactive, playable art. You know, at the end of the day, so I think it's like a supernatural extension to go from like you know art and two D art to three D art to basically games because you're basically just making the art interactive in a sense. Whether you're shooting robots or whatever it is you're doing, you know, in that thing, it's really just about like an interactive, like the best games, like I'm talking about like, you know, top, you know, the top games that everyone knows, the best games are the best generally because they have a really good story. Um, and because like the art direction, the art design is, is either unique or just like compelling in some sort of way. And that's what I really love about your, like the bozos and all the stuff that you've done is like, it's this really, like I can look at a game and a lot of the times like recognize like, oh, that's like a Renault, like, you know, experience, like whether it's the Bozo yeah. or it's the new game that you're working on, um, like it has that kind of unique flair to it, which I think is super cool. Yeah. And for, for games, there's so many things to consider to design, right? You have the 
environment, uh, environment design, the character design, uh, feedback design. As you can see, this little guy is like evolving here and it gives a, a feedback, uh, which is important for, for the player to kind of register that he did something right or wrong. And part of, um, of like designing these experiences is taking care of all of the things you can imagine to kind of amplify um, those those feelings that the player would uh, would basically like receive. Um, yeah, uh, this uh, I wanted. Yeah, I wanted to maybe to show you those ones as well because I can maybe show you through a quick process. And I wanna I wanna show a, a few different things. So maybe I can kind of go pretty quickly uh, to talk sure. about those. Um, let me pull, pull something out. Yeah, so basically, like doing those, I actually did those little mood board for each one. So what I do is that I basically go on, uh, on Pinterest and I have a multitude of, uh, I don't know how many pins I have. I think I have 1,200, but everything I, I like and resonate with, I save and I classify it, I quite categorize it. And I later use it to kind of, uh, if I have a project, whether it's, you know, branding or gaming or whatever it is, I can kind of like pull all of those things that I like, those little uh, impression. And uh, that's, I guess that's why Pinterest is so addictive is like you're collecting those impression, right? So if, when you're going to your feeds and it could be anything, I guess, that you can kind of collect and save, but you're looking at something and you're like, oh, okay, this makes me vibe somehow. I like it. It makes me feel something. It reminds me maybe of, you know, Gundam and Gundam reminds me of my childhood. And like, so on those, all those impressions are going to lead you to kind of uh, take the information and look at what constitutes the picture and what makes it interesting to you. So in that case, it could be maybe the plastic materials that reminiscent of a toy, obviously the intricacy of, you know, a, a, a robot design and those kind of things. And those things that you're going to like, you're going to follow those impressions and save them and later reuse them to uh, make, a, make a mood board and create, uh, like, basically create um, sort of like guideline, a visual guideline for your, your project. So, for example, I have this little forest here. Uh, I have this kind of, you know, urban environment here. Uh, I wish I could credit everyone who, you know, did those things. I kind of like showing them <laughs> all of the, <laughs> I apologize. I know this is like a big deal for artists to be credited, but I guess when I do the moon board, it's always for internal use. I don't, I never really show them, but I'm mm -hmm. basically looking at the, all of those little impression and thinking about what I like. For example, in this one, it could be the fluorescent colors, um, the stroke treatment, things like that. And, um, this is gonna help you kind of like lead the the look and feel for for your design and for your your creative or art direction basically. For example, here you can see the the shapes are interesting, the way they kind of like um, you know respond and, and interact. Uh, so when you kind of continue to to study uh, images and understand how they're made, you can then kind of use and take take on those principles, extract them. And then um, make it like your make it your own. So you're not copying; you're actually extracting, like in, being inspired by what someone else has created and creating so, something new out of it. And uh, awesome. this this is how I've made. Um, uh, and uh, I guess, oh, right, there you go. Here also requires having an obscene number of applications open on your computer at once. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I'm fortunate to have a, a good computer. Uh, to help me for for three dates differently, so you can see here this little um, like bozo bozo town and uh, how it's created basically. Yeah, maybe you can maximize this. Oh, there you go. So that's the kind of like the, the those different results, right? And I'm gonna talk a little bit about how the parts are made. Um, for example, for this one, it's basically I have this like little um, system that I use to make. Um, the Bozo Island, uh, which is, uh, I don't know why it is a Bozo Island. Maybe we can, uh, maybe I, I, oh, I actually have it on the thing. Uh, I think here. I need to bounce some time on the, between the, this, I have lots of tabs open, so I apologize. We'll do a separate stream on how you do tab management in Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this is the Bozo Island uh, right here. You can see. 
Um, so yeah, this is kind of like how I go about it is I collect all of those, uh, in, like I, I gather all, a bunch of impressions and then I start to draw something out of it really quickly. I make just a sketch. And um, basically I made this little system to allow me to like architecture um, the, the island and, and other things. And I basically just combine them and design them, you know, kind of uh, like on, on with Cinema 4D, which I, I've been using for, for 12 years. I, sorry for Blender users. <laughs> but um, yeah, basically I, I make this system and then I just kind of like follow the follow a sort of flow and, and come up with, with it. And then obviously there's uh, the, the lighting and, and the texturing. Um, and yeah, this is kind of like how, uh, how I make uh, these kind of things. And for the Bozo Town, for example, I've used, um, I actually, hold on, let me check which software I use because I don't remember now because I used Medium now, but before I used, I used to use another one. And for, to create those little trees, I have it right there. Uh, so you're actually doing it in VR? Yes. Yeah. So basically I constructed um, all of the sort of like architecture in Cinema 4D and then I import this model and I would just sculpt um, those uh, those ones in, uh, in VR. So this one I've done specifically with Gravity Sketch and then I kind of like combine them and remesh them to kind of, you know, get the, the shape and the, and the form that I want. Uh, maybe that's a bit better with uh, this one, the bosom maze. Um, check. Yeah, there you go. So I kind of go in VR and like design all of the, the shapes and form and kind of take them uh, back to, to Cinema 4D. I remesh them, I make the UV and I import them and kind of, you know, make, make something out of it like oh, that. Wow. And this wow. is uh, how I've done on this one as well. Whoop, there you go. A bit more uh, heavy, but you can select, you know, make this tree all around it, kind of like VR is really good for that. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of like how I made the, those Bozo environments. Uh, and I wanted to make a game out of it, but the, making a consistent game in a car loop is something that I still exploring with and takes a lot of time in development. So I have a tendency to try to do everything. So I basically taking my time now. Uh, I'm so sorry for those waiting for the games, but I'm yeah I'm gonna try to to find uh, another solution for that. <laughs> yeah, and we'll do we'll do on a different stream in the future. We're gonna have a topic focused on like um, core loops, like how you go about building or core, like what is what is a core loop? Like first like first of all like what well, and it's not for you to answer, but like we'll go through that in a future stream for for people to watch and uh, like how to build that out. But no, this yeah. is. This is yeah. There's definitely a lot of things that comes into making a game, and if you're doing it on your own, um, it can be pretty daunting unless you, you're trying to achieve something really simple, which was my mistake. I tried to do something a bit too complicated and so too big, so no, I'm, I'm being scheduled now. Yeah. <laughs> so I try, well, to, try to focus. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, like you said, complexity is, what was the, was the background? Complexity is the exactly. enemy of... Exactly. Complexity uh... is the enemy of... Uh, com execution of execution yeah so like so like this was like something i learned like there was like one lesson i could take away from my four years in college and i took this uh mobile programming course this was in 2010 2011 so like the iphone and stuff was like new and uh, i had this awesome professor who actually taught like larry page and um tony fidel and stuff too which was super cool we had the same wow um oh, professor cool. wow. um and his and his um this was at michigan and his like kind of thing was it was all about designing mobile apps and building mobile apps that particular class. And his um, his kind of motto was like take an idea that you have for like say an app you want to build and then simplify it down in terms of like what it's for and then simplify it again and just like keep simplifying it down to like its most basic thing and build that thing. And you know if it's like a weather app, you know for example like. Don't have it do like a thousand things. Like just have it like pop them. Just tell you like what the temperature is. Like do that one thing, and then and then add like later like add things like one step at a time. Like don't try and you know have don't get too complicated too quickly. Absolutely, uh, there's definitely this this desire to you know want to achieve a lot, which I I've fallen you know guilty of, 
and it's really hard to kind of uh, separate from that and and go back to basics but you always want to go back to basics it's pretty it's better um yeah better said than done again I guess but. definitely definitely easier said than done 100 percent. yeah i know i'm guilty that's two to this day i'm like oh i want to do this thing and this should do this and this is this and it's like yeah i think it's like how do you how do you go about like what do you have a process like do you put together any sort of like like timeline or hierarchy like as you're going through that being like this is like sort of like the end goal like my dream like nirvana of what i want the game like what i would say a game or, or an experience to be but then like breaking it down into like phases do you do something like that or i definitely like tried that um but it's definitely becomes complex so at the moment i'm focusing on um, making assets and building them uh, i can actually show um uh, maybe let me see some i'm kind of like just focusing on collecting my impressions and and making it into into something um let me check where is it uh, yeah, so I have those references, for example, for Infinity. And I really wanted to do Mac because I love Ghost in the Shell and Apple Seed. Like, I'm a big fan of, mm -hmm. of Mac. And it was always too complex to to model in, in 3D. But I recently come across Medium. Uh, this this um, this guy, Mac, Mac Nuggets, on, on Twitter is, like, a concept artist for, like, the Batman um, video game and so on. And he, like, introduced... Uh, this idea on Twitter and I, I thought it was just amazing you know and, and really fast so that's the kind of um, the things I'm focusing on now is really focusing on the aesthetic developing the aesthetic and creating uh, the assets and a workflow that that goes uh, basically much faster so uh, for example I'm like using um, medium let's see if that yeah exactly so this is a mech uh, I, I've been uh, working on, for example, and I basically just sketch them out and, and add details and so on. So it's been really interesting to to work with uh, with those tools as well, because it really sort of like you don't think about geometry. You you just sculpt them and, and make them your own. Um, let me see. I have, uh, I have a few more. This is and, so cool. And this is this is medium that you're in the, on the Oculus. Exactly, yeah. And and with with this, it's like I, I liked creating, for example, with uh, with the other one. I forgot the name. You see, I already forgotten about it. Uh, Gravity Sketch, the one I've used for the the, the Bosaton I introduced before. But now yeah. with this one, you can create like more complex things, which was kind of like excited about, and and like basically go go faster. So I basically created this this gun as well for for spatial, which uh, I might I might show a little bit how um, how I do it uh, because it was just a simple ask. Okay, make a spatial gun. I already have uh, impressions that I've collected for a spatial world, so kind of like my tone on the brand is kind of like you know set. I know where I'm going. I gather the the references that I like and a little concept like this one, and then I go and directly uh, sculpt in. Um, in medium, you know, like those different parts and so on, and make them uh, make them my own, basically. That's cool. Wow. Uh, it's a hand built gun. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's and awesome. This is the result I rendered out of uh, like oh, I guess wow. this is rendered with Unreal, but um, I wanted actually to maybe show you how to like take an asset like that to go a little bit technical and take an asset like that and bake the normals because that's something that people might be interested in because it's always something that i scratch my head around and i've finally i guess like in the last six months figure out how to do it properly and you know very yeah. clean yeah if we want to like take like before we get into that just kind of like i guess like for people that might be joining now or to to kind of recap so like the, if we kind of um overview of your general process is right starting with like pinterest exactly ideas Research, collecting research. impression, and and gathering those impression into into something consistent, and then uh, exploring. So I guess like I went straight to I guess developing here because the, the ask was pretty simple, but I could have done you know a few options and kind of like choose from there. But I guess um, we've experienced you can you see the things that would already work like how to make something that follows, for example, a spatial design with like round, rounded corner, 
like it's like it becomes less of a it becomes a no-brainer i guess because you're like okay i know the spatial language because it's made of rounded corners you know black and white things with accent of colors and um like i kind of like have this library and those references in my head and that allows me to to go faster but maybe i would have gone and like researched those things uh some more i guess i don't know if uh uh, uh i don't know if i have uh maybe the and you're box. using for people that you're using Figma here, so you're taking stuff on Pinterest, putting it like kind of organizing it in Figma. In exactly. I guess this is, for example, uh, an exploration. This is in in 3D, and it's just it's. I guess it's not spatial related, but I'm I'm exploring uh, like so. I've already researched. I know I'm gonna go for this style of like line work, but only a few of them are gonna be kind of like successful and and be used, you know, as the as the final thing. The rest of it is just I'm just trying stuff basically. Uh, nice. And this, like, kind of just like researching like that, and and re refining every time. Like, for example, you can see this. So just some like some ideas, but they're not fleshed out. They're just kind of little concept that you try, and then they kind of go and and become something um, like more refined. I don't know where. Uh, maybe in uh, I have something more refined in uh, maybe in this one now. Oh yeah, in this one. And then, like all of those tests, then become it becomes something more refined. So you mm -hmm. you start to kind of like put things together, and things become you know some things become more successful. And it's kind of like your job to kind of like pick and choose, and see what are the things that are going to constitute something that can give an, an impression, you know, to to someone. And I guess this is for for both of us, which like I guess. I'm, I don't really like them anymore because I, I kind of like moved on, <laughs> but uh, I definitely want to kind of use and, and refine things. And like each time you, you see something and you get an impression, it can give you another like ideas and another possibility. Mm -hmm. Wow. <clears throat> um, I love that. Yeah. So uh, basically to go back to, to this process, I basically sculpt the the gun out of a medium and export it. And it's going to come out really mushy. So you kind of want to connect all the polygons because it comes into different parts. Mm. And then you you remesh it, which is with this uh, little remesh thing here. You can just drop it. You make sure everything is connected back. But the, they will be completely disconnected. So you connect them, you remesh them. And from this, you can make you can even remesh them and and make like a lower polygon version, which might you might kind of want to um, like change because it's it's not going to give you the the perfect shape. So that's why mm -hmm. I basically um, it's called the retopology. So I basically use, for example, the, the um, this little pen and I have a reproject result and I click and just draw the polygon one by one. And kind of like make make it this way, basically. Uh, so I've already um, started to to do that. And I guess like what I wanted to do is to bake the normal, show you to bake the normal, because something I have to do is to, <laughs> to put one stones right. So for that, I basically use uh, substance. And, cool. and I got a I got a drop for no right now, but Jack's got you covered. Got you. Okay, cool. I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch the recording because this looks actually. This is like now where it gets really interesting. And then, <laughs> so I'm definitely gonna watch the recording over on our YouTube. Um, nice. So thanks for knowing in advance, but I'll see you guys. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Thanks, bit. Jake. See you. Have a good yeah. one. See you, Jake. Later, guys. Thank Bye. you. <clears throat> nice. Nice. All right. Well, yeah. Carry on. Yeah, so let's use a Unity template. I've used a Unity uh, select template. Actually, so we just, uh, this is a Substance Painter. So this is um, a software from Adobe. You can get it. Okay. I think it's like probably 50 bucks a month. To you get all of the Substance one or maybe 20 bucks just for the painter. And uh, so you want to... To use that to to bake your normals because for example for this asset right like i have um like you know uh, waldo who's the director of engineering um always tell me like 
oh, we got to do things like lightweight and locally. So you can't really import that gun. Uh, which one is it? This one. You can't import that into Unity because it's going to be too much. Uh, you see, this is like 246,000 triangle, yeah, which is so way, way, way too, too much. Many. Exactly. But well, even just use... looking at the mesh on the gun, you can tell that this is, mesh is much denser than the other one. Yeah, exactly. But it's kind of going to have those like little details mm -hmm. um, that you you want to to bake it. For example, I actually uh, to do my my render on Unreal, I actually baked uh, this uh, the very high polygon version mm. into this one. And then kind of like, ah. you know, that's how I did, um, uh, where is it? This guy. So ah. what you see is, is the version with, uh, you know, two, 200,000 uh, polygons, which is, you know, fine to, to run, I guess, in a browser, but only if it was, if it was the only object in the screen, you could, you could have it. Yeah. So like the stuff that you do to get it spatial ready is that remesh stuff and then reframing all the polygons and then doing the baking the final exactly baking. so we're gonna we're gonna use uh this uh this property version here and bake it with uh this guy who's already the i guess mid you know mid body because this one's a high body so we don't need the mid body because it's not gonna make sense because um the, i mean i'm gonna show you like the process of doing that but basically it doesn't make sense to to bake something really high because this gun is going to be on screen uh it's going to be really small it's going to look like this right it's like uh okay like it's like kind of like using a uh, you know level of detail is like this is the you know far away level of detail and then as you zoom in maybe you can use more but like you wouldn't go with the this this big version right hmm. so for, for this i'm using substance which is uh so it's by adobe you can have it on your on a on a subscription and that's i'm just going to import it to to show you guys because it's it's really okay. cool Somebody and, in the chat asked a question. Um, they said from the Fabster, do you use instant meshes to repo your meshes? Does that make sense to you? Uh, I guess like I just, um, yeah, you, you can instance it, but you, you like, I guess in Cinema 4D, you, you don't really have to because if you don't have it selected, you're not going to um, like fuck up the mesh underneath i guess so i basically okay. just use this this body pen and like redraw it uh one side and then use symmetry to to kind of do it like it, it took me about an hour to to do this one properly i guess you know to to create this mesh and i wow. i it's important that as well that your mesh has uv actually um on um actually this one could use some love uh, i'm not sure like I just usually use the pack to automatic QV and like, oh, there you go. Yeah. And, and connect it this way. If you want to do your UV like cleaner, that's fine. But with substance, basically you don't really need to have really clean. I mean, you, you want UV, UV to be clean and, and, um, like have, I don't know if, I don't know what when it is. When you say UV, so. I think that means ultraviolet. Is that what it means? Oh, no, 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 no. No, so UV is basically, okay, it's good that you ask this question because yeah. each polygon is then kind of like mapped out on yeah. um, on this like 2D picture, right? Yep. So basically UV is like this X, Y, um, uh, X, yeah, X, Y position of all of the polygon. So it gives this polygon this, this X, Y value for each one. And it mm -hmm. makes this little map, you know, of like, okay, this is where this polygon is and then this is for example if i if i write you know jack is the best here on the gun or something or like jack property then you're gonna have it like written like right here so it's okay. like a map basically gotcha so you kind of like wrap them and i guess like you can you can make them a little bit cleaner if you want to um, i'm not there's not a tutorial about uv because uv is also kind of boring uh -huh. <laughs> but <laughs> it's it's important uh, i mean it's important that like they look just flat and then um all of the other things you can kind of like cheat with um with substance using what's called a tri, tri planner which basically is like xyz and just project the texture and and blend it like as a sort of like a cube map onto your object 
so you're kind of like cheating in in that way with uh with substance okay but it's it's basically powerful to to make those those normals i'm gonna i'm gonna show you because it gives a lot of more information you're taking this and giving it a lot more information once you bake it okay so this those are all the uv i'm gonna um export it again because i i missed a, a polygon i don't know if you saw it was really big so i'm just gonna export it again into gun the poly I always export in a fbx okay let's go and um nope okay exporting good the reason for that is because that's compatible with unity right yeah like fbx is the most uh versatile one it's the one i feel like you honestly should use you don't want to use obj or other things like that um yeah like there's different format but fbx is more versatile because you can easily export characters and have them like have different skin mesh and stuff so it's it's pretty versatile for that cool very nice so yeah and i guess for for example for when you if i allow myself to to go back to um like you know the when you're sculpting the 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 gun for example that's mm -hmm. basically called uh, vdb and vdb is basically kind of like think of like it's like a voxel and it basically automatically kind of wrap polygons around it and this is what you get this is what you kind of like like allows you to basically it, it deletes you know those little voxel are like those position yeah and and then once you kind of like remesh it like it gives you something cleaner like you like the other you know, one we saw is more of like a grid and then like the low poly version you kind of want to strip that down as much as you can wow this this media map looks like it's extremely like powerful i'm gonna have to try that out one day in vr because it makes me feel like i could design stuff easily in vr it looks so intuitive yeah it's it's pretty fun like once you like there's no secret like you basically want to like look at like all the functionality and how it's done and then this is how you learn it so you just watch the tutorial and like basically take on the information try it yourself rewatch it if you need to and like yeah this is just how you acquire the the technical knowledge um to just like have like a good standard of of execution i guess um nice. so you want you know you want your your geometry to be clean you want your uv to be clean you can be a really good designer if you don't have like something clean you always your your work are always going to look like it's missing something so having mm -hmm. like that technical execution makes it makes all the difference for sure yep totally okay i'm gonna bake this one uh where is it oh no it's not on gaming it's on spatial versus gun okay low and opening this one and you can see i've got the high one but i actually haven't exported the the um sort of uh you know mid one i don't mm -hmm. want the, the ones too high i'm going to use this one let's check at the the polygon yeah that's fine like it's going to be like at this size each kind of like square is basically going to be pixel so that's yeah. going to be fine so okay. okay so we export this as a fp x as well and we're gonna cut it gun med and i try to do the so what we're gonna do is the normal map and like i always had issue to kind of like get that properly because I, I didn't have the right tool to use it but i know now like substance is the one thing you should use for your normal the um, you can try maybe with blender as well but substance gonna take in more information so it's i actually think it's better personally okay so what is a, a normal map uh let's let's bake it first and we're gonna find out <laughs> <laughs> okay go. yeah let's see what a normal map is okay so I'm, I'm opening this um this gun right here and this is in substance now oh by the way reno your camera just died oh okay it just said battery uh Oh, is out. Damn. Um, I'm out. Yeah, it's just okay. We're gonna off. we're gonna go to the the other camera. That's okay. <laughs> okay, you can see me now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> still a con. 
<laughs> Sin the King, okay, I guess. Okay. Yeah. So nice. Right, so we have a mesh here, and we can see this UV thing. So if I start to maybe paint on it, you can see it's kind of like yeah. filled up. You see, remember? Yep. And then I can kind of like paint. I can I think there's like this thing you can paint with particle and it drop and stuff. But to do that, uh, and this isn't a tutorial about substance either, I guess, but I just a little bit for the baking, but that's all we kind of gonna use it for so far. So yeah. I go this mode and I have bake mesh map and I'm choosing an output size of let's say 2048. We can always like take them down so it's better to have them high, I guess. Let's do 400 and we're not gonna use that in Unity, but it's gonna be fine. Okay. So I'm, I'm taking this one as a high putty, basically. I'm gonna take this gun med as a high definition mesh. And here you can see those little uh, band thing. I'm gonna try to adjust them. There you go. Well, it's gonna be, a, I have a little bit of a problem here and there. I guess maybe that's because of my mesh. It's not like great, but okay, let's try like this. We're gonna have a little problem, but maybe we can retouch them. I'm not gonna remodel it right now. If I were like, you know, working on this, I'd be like, oh, okay, I go back to my mesh and make it, you know, just like a little better. But let's say that's that's okay. Okay, so I'm gonna, okay, adjust this. And basically what it's gonna do is gonna create those like little rays and it's gonna project um, the like high polygon into the low polygon. So I'm just gonna click bake and I wait. And this is the position map. So the position map is like X, Y, Z. So basically the blue you can mm -hmm. see is the Z, the yellow is the Y and so on. And it's baking like yep. those position and and um, those those different things onto the the, um, the geometry. You can see this is an ambient occlusion, which basically take uh, like where things could like kind of like when you take an object and you know you have a crease inside. I don't know if uh, oh, yeah, there you go. You have a crease inside and it's going to be you know darker. Imagine this one is wide with you know. Like puts like yeah. some little dust and stuff goes on the crease. This is the ambient occlusion. Okay. There you Does go. It, it okay. Gives it the depth. Sorry. It gives it the depth, kind of helps show the depth. Um, I guess like ambient occlusion is more like the depth is more the the normal actually. It's more like okay. heights. Uh, technically, like heights is like in black and white. And normal is like in RGB. You can see this is all normal pass. We're gonna see it a little bit better now when I return to painting mode. There you go. Whoa, wow, look at that. This is wow. our this is our Lopoli version, right? Yeah. It yeah, looks so, good, I feel yeah. like for the first bake, right? <laughs> right. So you can see like the this like monster right here when basically projected into this guy who's you know kind oh. of like looks looks crappy here but now like it looks kind of dope and yeah i'm like wow so this is like the big discovery for me this year is like oh you can bake with uh, this simple you know tool and have lots of details into your asset and, so like yeah. so like basically how like the a simplified explanation of what baking it would be is that you can take you can get it's a way to get a model to have a lot of detail without it being a highly detailed model itself right exactly so now okay. when you look at the mesh map like there's the normal web world space normal id is basically you cannot export it through uh cinema code for but you can export it with blender it would have allowed me to have like you know like selection for those different parts. But yeah, like the, let's look at the normal then before I go off topic again. Yeah, so this is our normals basically. And it's like a X, uh, Y, Z into RGB. That's basically what the normals are. And it gives you the information of like, you know, the crease and the depth. So you see here, it's like a crease and then it kind of go and like do those little crease with the colors and everything so it's like this yeah. one is up this one is down this one is left this one is right so it yeah. kind of knows you know where which direction are going things mm. and you can't like you can try to paint it but honestly like good luck <laughs> uh, yeah, but cool, i feel like this way in this way you can this is the world space map so 
But what allows it to do like here, for example, is like you can add like, let's say like dust and stuff, and it would just put it on the top, right? Top part of your object, for example. Or like particle, it would just bounce like, you know, within the things like that. So yeah, let's do, let's do something quick. Then you got the single, single channel, base color. I guess there's no, you know, I should kind of like paint them. Maybe just do a quick paint or something. Um, height. I don't have any height away. Yeah, I guess like it's not just not on my as a layer, right? So those all of those things is the things you're gonna kind of like add on top. So we can add normals as well. And um basically substance is gonna take care of that once we apply a material to it. Let's apply a, a material. Uh so I like to use the smart material, which like it's like what the name are is that you just like drop it and then boom, you wow. have you know yeah. Like a, yeah, it's, it's pretty nuts. Like, you just go and you go, it's made of wood. Oh, know? wow. That's um, so easy. I would have but, a lot of fun playing with this. I'd be like trying every different material, same <laughs> whatever it's like. Right? Yeah. Uh, let's create a mask quickly so I can just do. So I'm just going to do and add, a, let's say, a black mask and then like paint the parts that I want to, to be. Um, so let's say I'm going to do. Where is the flow? Uh, where's the hardness? Hardness. Uh, kind of want something to paint a little bit more. I'm just going to change my brush here real quick. There you go. OK. OK, I'm just going to paint really quickly. I guess it's better to have like selection and stuff. Like you can find tutorial to, to do that. But I'm just going to do it really quickly for now. Mm -hmm. You can also look at the polygons, like for example, here. Like maybe I should, you know, take that down or something, and I can change my color in here. Let's say I go black, and then I can delete here, go white. There you go. So I'm just gonna do this one quickly. Okay, here. I'm gonna go back to it because this is just to show you the, the process. Yep. Okay, here. Some bashing out like this really quick, and then I'm gonna. Then I have to go and sort of like, you know, paint those ones or like have a, like some mm -hmm. mask or something to to make them proper. But let's say this is OK for now. I'm yep. just going to add, uh, let's say, steel paint underneath. Whoa. Wow. OK, I yeah. see. That's pretty cool. So that's and how then, you would do all the different colors and textures and stuff. Yeah, exactly. So let's just use. Uh, but this one, okay, this part is white, let's say. All right, okay. Well, you get the idea. I'm not going to paint everything right now, <laughs> but you get the idea. So yeah, I have we... the cool materials now. Nice. And we got like five minutes left, so I have like at least two more questions I think I, I want to ask. Yeah. So one of them would be like, can you describe a challenging aspect of just game design and design? that might not be immediately apparent to someone that is outside of the field. And so how did you navigate those challenges that you've discovered? I think like, um, like really thinking about mental model when you creating something like, you know, how things work and so on, uh, is definitely something that needs to be included on, on this, you know, whole process of like discovering, um, like, what each things are for and this is kind of like how they should be designed because it goes to this or that mental model um, so like thinking through what your process would actually be and seeing if you know it in your head um more like what the like if you're designing for games like is like what the item is doing and how does my design make sense okay yeah asking yourself those questions yeah nice yeah absolutely okay. Yeah, um, um, just to, to finish on this one, then oh yeah, I basically ahead. I can like kind of uh, just export those uh, those textures and import them in Unity, and then I can kind of like create my, my material and apply uh, you know each of those to to my uh, my Unity project, uh, which is you know in in here, I then kind of like import my texture, create my uh, my materials. Oh. And, and you see, like, you know, all of the base map, metallic, normal, heights, occlusion. Yep. All of those are now in, uh, uh, 
Uh, let me gaming spatial. Okay. All of yeah. those uh, maps are now in um, in here, right? So okay. I can apply. If I do this with quick, show you. It takes one minute. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, this is like the final part, putting it together in Unity. So yeah, that's the important part to show. Yeah, I guess like let's uh, let's do it real quick. Okay, I'm gonna keep this one here with using the lock, and I just put the gun on my normals. And uh, oh, I guess I need the correct one. Uh, yeah, basically you just drop it in here. I don't know why this one isn't showing up now. I think it's because it doesn't have the the um, the right uh, gun on it. But it's basically how you do it. You just like put this uh, this one where where it should be. Gun low. That's I'm freaking out now because of the timer. <laughs> uh, oh, it's okay. Um, yeah, I see you have a question. I I just show like in the background to do it. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so obviously the stuff that you do involves the, you know, you have to be technically skilled, but then you also have to be creatively skilled. How have you like throughout your career been able to develop both your technical skills and creative skills? Obviously some of that just like comes naturally. Um, but like, have there been any resources or what advice would you give to people that want to improve their technical and creative skills so that they can work together and be technically creative i feel like um like learn like watching tutorial is great uh but it's also great if you kind of like try to do something and figure it out as you go you kind of like want to try the different strategic approach and find what works for you and that kind of like ultimately kind of like shows you which are the different area you can kind of like work work in if you know you maybe you prefer to do concept art and you don't care about doing 3d maybe you just want to do 3d and you do, you just want to have people do dope concept art for you and then do all of the modeling and all of that and be you know and like uh the best at this it's kind of like you can either choose to be specialized how to or to use systems it kind of like depends of like your personality and so on uh, i guess for me i like system i, I like to see things holistically so um i like being like an expert in a field rather than on a specific things but it's kind of um you you kind of like choose as you discover more things about yourself i guess that makes uh, sense. does that satisfy your your answer <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely no that's a great answer thank you thank you for like all the stuff that you've learned i see you kind of got this working it looks like a little better yeah, it's kind of like in it, you probably want to have like a like a roughness map, but you need to create a custom shader for that, which like with the shader graph, which they also tutorial about. But you can see here, we can see our normal modes. It looks pretty good, you know, as we kind of like pan around it, you can see those little details here kind of, it looks, it puts basically more detail and make it look like it's kind of like higher body. Obviously pretty rough because it's not, you know, we haven't give it some love. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is kind of like how you you bake. So you can do that with clothes, uh, with uh, cars, and uh, with environments as well. You know, if you're doing a wall or something like that. Um, yeah. So, and this yeah. all came from your process of going through, finding your inspirations, collecting that, putting it all together, and then you went. We end up here. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. So now in the development phase, and then after that, I'm gonna go and you know put some details and things like that, like kind of finalizing. It's like research, exploration, development, and then details. Nice. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> I I think so many people are gonna be able to you know take so much away from this stream today and everything that you kind of talked about. You talked about so many different things from just the ideation and you know concepting phase all the way through you know how you actually kind of strategize how you build stuff and then actually getting into some nitty-gritty you know important aspects of building in 3d that you know are valuable to people so we're very 
Jake and I, on behalf of Jake and myself, we're very glad that you were able to join. And we, this will not be the last time we hopefully have you on the stream. Nice, nice. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, I hope uh, yeah, it's, it helped uh, some people to find out how to to you know go around those things because uh, it's it's a journey for sure. <laughs> it sure is. Well, we're all lucky to have you being a part of this journey with us. So thank you. Um, cool. To everybody thank else. You so much, Jack. Yeah, to everybody watching, we uh, will be back next week, 2 p.m., with another stream uh, featuring another special guest. Um, so be sure to tune in then. You'll be able to watch this replay on YouTube if you uh, didn't sit through the whole thing. So um, we appreciate you all that tuned in. And uh, peace out. Take care. I'll see you around right now. Thank you, Jack. Have a Bye. good one, guys. Bye.